Welcome to Rising Frequencies, where we'll help you apply esoteric wisdom to your daily life. I'm Andrea Mullaney, and I'm here with Lisa Risingberry. Each week, we discuss ways you can help yourself to look inside and perform the inner alchemy that is needed to grow and evolve. Remember who you are and what you came here to do. This week is episode 12, and we're actually recording this on March 11th, Wednesday. And we've actually are on our 12th show. Wow. Yes. So Hard to believe. Yep. Didn't think we'd have that much to talk about. <laughs> no. <keep> <laughs> didn't think we would even be doing this. Yes. But uh, this week's show is about infinity, the infinity symbol, and we've called it Secrets of Infinity. And both of us, we had some kind of insights and realizations about the infinity loop. And we did some research, and we actually wrote a, uh, Lisa wrote a beautiful blog post about it, and I added to it. And yeah, we've come up with some stuff we'd like to talk about in this show. So, would you like to start, Miss Lisa? Yeah, it's it's, it's interesting, and um, I I've always had, like most people, an affinity to the infinity loop, <laughs> and you know, just had a very very strong connection to it, and just kind of felt um, that we just didn't have all of the information um, probably because the planet wasn't vibrating at a level that it was you know ready for the information I'm just not sure but I've always had this this feeling I've just for I guess since 2008 huh? 2008 infinity there you go that's right <laughs> and the number eight is infinity so uh, Andrea and I help on Santos's show. We're we're two of the co-hosts with Ruth. at Santos's show, and one of his shows, he was talking about the Limnusgate. Am I saying that right? Yes, you are. Okay. Limnusgate. L e l e m n i s c a t e. Limnusgate. Yes. yes. And you know he really focused on that a lot and he was showing pictures of the sideways infinity and that was the first time i had heard the sideways infinity called limnusgate and it just kept pinging me pinging me pinging me and i, I my my body was vibrating i'm like oh my gosh there's i just kept getting this these inner knowings every time he would say limnusgate and and it just drove me crazy so then in January I decided well you know I think I started doing research on this before I heard his show but then after after his uh after his teaching on this I just I couldn't let it go um so I I kind of feel I came across some new information and and I know there's nothing new under the sun but I I believe I came up I found something that just isn't written. I can't find it in the ancient text. And I started doing research. And I'm very big on gematria and linguistics uh, with with language. And I've, I've learned my gematria from Marty Leeds. I've been doing it on my own, I guess, wow, probably since 2012, 2013, when, whenever he started doing videos. And linguistics I got into with Santos. And I've been listening to Santos on the School of Holy Science since day one. As soon as Ruth put up that site, I was there. And I've been, um, you know, I, I, I consider myself a student of Santos's. And so those are two passions of mine. Math, gematria, uh, also the Pythagorean numerology and linguistics. So I decided to tackle the infinity loop. And so this paper that I wrote, um, it's, it's about the vertical infinity symbol. The sideways infinity symbol is related to the silver gate of men. And it is taught also that, you know, that you enter the silver gate and you go through and then on the second loop of the Lemnus Gate is the Golden Gate. 
this the the silver gate on the left I wish I had graphics for this oh man I wish I had graphics right now but if you look if you picture a sideways infinity symbol on the left side that's the silver gate and it's taught that you come through the silver gate and then you exit through the golden gate silver gates Taurus Golden Gate is um, Scorpio, so you go through and you exit. If, if you can picture the Zodiac Wheel, you would go and leave through Scorpio. And I'm like, yes, that's correct, but there's more. There's, there's a whole half that's missing. It just has to be because when, when you look at the number eight, to me, that's infinity because it's, it's standing upright. It hasn't fallen, and Andrea's going to get into that point when, when she when she starts talking. So I just dove into my research and I, um, I combined, uh, like I said, Dramatria linguistics. And at the end, um, some, some mythology a little bit. I, I don't really go into the mythology as, as much as I could, because it gets a kind of complicated with that. So this is my research. This I, I didn't get this from anybody. This is a hundred percent mine and I can't find this written anywhere. <laughs> so you're just going to have to kind of bear with me, but um, the math supports my findings. So what I did is I thought like a child. I had to think like a kid. When, when you do linguistics and, and you start to pick pieces of words together, you can't think like an adult. You have to really be in touch with your inner child to, to really understand the holy science. And, and it's written in the Bible, uh, children will, will inherit the kingdom of God. And, and the kingdom of God is from within. And the reason why is because you have to think outside the box. You have to not be indoctrinated um, to not scribble outside the lines and just think like a silly kid. And that's what opens you up to the divine is your inner child. So and I, you can ask Andrea, I have no problem connecting with my inner child. Probably a little too much if you ask some of my friends. So <laughs> it's also the inner child is heart centered and not, they haven't been, you know, beaten down and become so mind, left brain mind focused. Children are much more open to their their soul understanding their soul knowledge than the uh, than adults are because their egos haven't really kicked in as much as you know they they have by the time people are kids grow up yes and it's so true and when you look at the vertical and in, in infinity symbol you have as as above which is the first part and you have as below which is the the the, the second loop and they connect in the middle and now that you brought that up, that's exactly, and we've taught this with when we went through the chakras, we have three above the heart that is as below, I mean, as above, and then we connect in the heart, which is the middle of the infinity, and then we have three below, we have seven, three above, three below, and then your heart, six plus one equals seven. So, yeah, maybe that's why, you know, we, we had to think like kids to, to kind of figure out some of the secrets of of infinity not not to, yeah. you know maybe and we just had to remember it so exactly. I looked at the word limnescate first I, I went into linguistics and I kept saying limnescate and I was looking at the spelling and you can in linguistics kind of reverse some letters to to get some clues because th things are reversed here especially in this reality um, things that are are bad are good things that are good that are bad you know you, you violence is entertainment violence is not supposed to be entertainment there's all you know it's, it's we're just backwards right now here not for long but right now everything is just bass backwards in my opinion so I kept looking at limnescate limnescate and I kept saying it really, really slow. And I kept looking at the spelling. And what I came up with, <laughs> and then you're going to laugh, P people are just going to laugh, is one gate lets you in, which is the silver gate. One gate lets you out, which is the golden gate. 
So I kept thinking, lim nin skate, let in skate. And if you look at L E M N I, I just reverse the N and the I, and it's lem in skate. Kind of like let me in the gate. When we incarnate here, you come in through that gate. They let you in the lemnus gate. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. So I decided to do the gematria for a let in gate. And now I have to say that I'm I'm condensing hours, actually days, days and days of research and linguistics and, and the math because I knew it was there and I wasn't going to give up, but I just had, I had to put the puzzle pieces in correct. So let in gate, the gematria for that. And if, well, for those of you that don't know what Gematri is, it's, it's Jewish numerology. Each letter corresponds to numbers. And Gematria just gives you an insight to the vibrations of the words and, and what they mean. And, and the better you get at it, you can, it's, a, it's a great tool for research. It just really is. So the Gematria for let in gate is 558 which is a fantastic number. If you add all of those numbers together, it is the number nine, uh, which is the number of consciousness in, in regular um, numerology. And it's also the upper half of the infinity, okay? And then I decided to take this a step further, like, like you do with, um, linguistics you you take a word and, and you divide it in half and, and you, you cut it into sections to figure out the real meaning I took five plus five is ten that's the number of completion and then you're left with eight which is the number of infinity so that that just showed me okay now now I'm getting somewhere so I went uh, more into the what is what is the let out gate <laughs> And to me, the let out gate is the upward infinity loop. And it took me a long time with different words, you know, you know, to, to try to figure out let out gate. It, it didn't just like, oh, you know, it, it didn't come to me easy. Like I said, it, it, it was days and sleeping on it and having dreams about it and so forth. So the gematria for let in gate is 558. The gematria for let out gate is 885. So it's the same numbers, different combination. So once, once again, that's, you know, that shows me right there that one gate lets you in and then the other gate does the reverse, lets, lets you out. So there's the math. So I was like, I'm very, very excited at, at this point. So I decided to try to figure out what the heck is the name of the vertical infinity loop. There, there has to be a, a, a name for it. The sideways is limbless skate. And when you come in through the limbless skate, limbless skate means adorned with ribbons. And the ribbons that you receive when you come in through the, the um, limbless skate, the sideways infinity loop is your DNA. DNA, they're, they're ribbons. So when you come in the sideways limb gate, you get your DNA. And that's, that's what you use while you're here in your physical incarnation. Um, and we know the um, numerology for your physical body is 666. And that popped up next in, in my uh, Dramatria. So I did the Dramatria for limb gate which is the sideways infinity loop. And I came up with 606 in simple Dramatria. And in English Dramatria, the number was 101. So right there, that's huge because you have, instead of 666, you have six, you have a zero. A zero, it's a circle and it's a incomplete infinity loop. An infinity loop is just a twisted zero. That's all it is. Um, the Elohim were actually called the twisted ones. Am I correct in that, Andrea? 
Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yep. And when you when you twist the zero, you get the infinity loop. Okay. And like I said, then the uh, the English gematria for the sideways infinity, the limnus gate is one hundred and one. Um, and I have to go right and tell and tell you, uh, I came up with limnos gate, let out gate. I did the gematria for the word that I feel is the upwards infinity loop, which is limnos gate, l- let me out gate, basically. It equals 666 and 111. So limnos gate, L-E-M-N-O, skate, S-G-A-T-E, not S-A-C-T, but G-A-T-E. G-A-T-E, like a regular gate, equals 666 and 111. So right there, you have the completion of the 606 into the 666, which is the number of our physical body. It's the completion of the number of our physical body. The first six is as above. The last six is the as below. The second, the middle six, the second six, is when the two shall become one. And that's completion that's what you're here to do when that when you merge ego and soul you are a completed human and you've graduated and you are now officially a 666 um the 111 i I think everyone knows what triple 11 is that means you're awake you know you've awakened so when when you graduate and you leave through the golden gate of limnos gate which is my word you are a completed human with 666 and you are fully awakened with 111 okay and that just that alone blew me away um when uh, another background information on infinity loops you hear a lot of people talking about time loops well the fallen infinity loop and when you look at it, it just keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going. The silver gate just never stopped. People weren't leaving here like they were supposed to. I mean, that's this is not my information. <laughs> Anyone who's been reincarnating here over and over and over again, you can say, yes, I've been here forever. Um, and that's because things got screwed up here and time was messed with and, and these time loops were altered and the silver gate you know just stayed silver it never went to gold it never let anyone out we just kept going around and around and around and around and when you look at if you put the sideways infinity on a piece of paper and you put the vertical infinity right over top of it you can see with the golden gate now open once you get to middle which is your 666 when you are a full human and you've merged ego and soul and it comes to the center, you can exit through the vertical infinity loop, which is the golden gate. The, the, infinity, the, the vertical infinity loop is an upward organic path, an organic timeline, um, and it's an organic ascension path, and you leave through the upward infinity loop, which is the golden gate. So that's... That's my little thing I have to say. And I thought, I thought that was just the bee's knees. And I thought that was amazing. I have, I have the gematria was supporting it. The linguistics was supporting it. And after days of info, you know, just, and actually I was just doing this for myself. I had no intentions of writing about this. It's just something Andrea and I, you know, we had these inner knowings. It's just, we knew this stuff, but you have to prove your stuff. You have to do the research and you have to do the work. You can't just say, oh, I, you know, I, I think this. Opinion is nothing. You have to back it up with science. It has to be balanced. Inner knowing and your physical experience that's a balanced uh, thesis. So I thought I was done and I, ca- I decided to Google my name, Lemno Skate. Of course, I got nothing, Zippo. And I was a little disappointed and I'm like, well, you know, the Golden Gate has not been open. Um, it just recently opened and, you know, we're about to experience the golden energy. You know, we've been in the age of Aquarius, but we haven't really been experiencing it. And, um, I'm not the first writer to write about that, you know, that the Golden Gate is is now open. 
and I was a little disappointed, you know, there's nothing on Limno Skate. So, again, went into my inner child and I googled the name, the Gate of Lemnos. And lo and behold, and if you're not sitting down, sit down for this one. There's a book written by Francis Jarman called The Gate of Lemnos. Now, Lemnos is also a city in Greece, and I got a lot of uh, mythology out of that, but that kind of took me down another rabbit hole, and I was like, ah, too much. Let's just stick, let's just stick with The Gate of Lemnos. So this book is about, and I'm going to read it right off the website, um, The Gate of Lemnos is the entrance to a new world one of the wonders of the universe holy crap i i was just floored <laughs> floored so i know it's the lemnus gate no one can tell me it's not because i have the math i have the linguistics and here's someone else that's crazy like me that happened to get this information as well and he wrote a book about it <laughs> and, <laughs> So, oh, the vertical infinity loop is the gate of Lemnos, and it is the golden gate, and that is the gate that we exit from. So, that was as far as I took it, and then I, I called Andrea and, and was all excited and told her about my findings. And we spent like three hours on the phone just going back and forth, finding more and more and more stuff. And it was mostly mythology. And uh, so we kind of left that. And then and then she went into her, her own information. And uh, it's fantastic. So I'm going to hand it off to uh, Andrea. Hello. Yes, we're so... I have also felt such a strong affinity or calling or you know just an attraction to the to the infinity symbol and I actually had a dream where I was shown the infinity symbol the sideways one the limnus gate and it was pushed upwards and I was told that the sideways infinity symbol is incorrect energy and that it needed to be standing up to be in the correct energy, that it was like broken or, or out of whack being sideways and it was supposed to be standing up. It was supposed to be a figure eight. And so I was like, aha, it's supposed to be upright. The sideways infinity symbol, that's, that's you know, why we keep incarnating over and over and over again here. And it just ha we haven't been able to get off the, uh, the cycle of reincarnation. <clears throat> so, uh, and when we figured out, when Lisa did all this research and figured out it was the golden gate, I'm like, yes, that makes perfect sense. And so I got some knowings about it um, kind of, within the human body on the as below level and Lisa got information on the as above level with the gates getting in the incarnation gate is the limbness gate being adorned with ribbons gaining your DNA because it's deoxyribonucleic acid ribo ribbons and then when you are finished with earth school and you've evolved to you know where you need to be to get out of here, you can you exit through the Golden Gate. And uh, so, anyway, within your own body, um, the sideways infinity symbol. Okay, imagine it, and everyone, most people have heard of the Taurus, right? The T-O-R-U-S. It's a um, sacred geometric symbol. And it, um, when you spit, it looks like a donut. And I realized that that sideways infinity loop is a 2D torus. If you spin it, it becomes the torus shape. And that is the shape of the energetic field, the electromagnetic field around the human body. And actually, uh, I have to credit Ashayana Dean. I listened to her speak or her interview, and this was like three or four years ago, and she talked about how the energetic field of humans was messed up. She called it um, taking a bite of the poisoned apple, and that was the, tor the toroidal field around the body. It looks like an apple, kind of apple-shaped. 
um, she said that that's the poison apple that was talked about in um, like Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. She took a bite of the po- poisoned apple and fell into a death-like sleep, just like sleeping human beings. We took the veil, we took the poison apple. Eve in the Garden of Eden took a bite, took the apple, bit into it, gave it to Adam, and they fell from grace. So it's kind of a, it's a metaphor, that poison apple, for the toroidal field of the human body out of whack as it is with the sideways limnoscate. And so I saw the human body with an upright limnoscate infinity loop. And the difference in the way the energy works, when you have a sideways infinity symbol and the toroidal, everything moves, your toroidal field spins and it creates that 3D shape. The thing is, it will eventually burnout it, it's not it's not connected to source it's feeding on your internal energy human beings are are internally creative with their with their connection to being part of the earth basically are internally creative however with that energy field sideways like that it's not being refed the way it's supposed to be there's no connection to source above and it's not properly connected to the earth's core either However, when you correct that infinity symbol and fix your energetic template, um, you have the proper infinity symbol, which is going up up, up through your top chakras, through your heart center, and down through your bottom chakras. And when you spin that on the same axis, it elongates, and that um, top loop goes all the way up to source, to your higher self, and back through your heart center, and it goes all the way down to the the core of the earth. And so you have source, like the galactic center ultimately, and the earth's core connected to each other through you. And you are involved with that whole, you are one with source and with the earth, And that's how we were meant to be. That's how it's supposed to be. I had an interesting, uh, not really dream, kind of, um, as I was resting. I was just, I always go into this state, well, I try to, (laughs) uh, theta, it's called, when you're just waking from sleep or just about to fall asleep. And your, your brain waves, you know, you relax into a state. It's almost like meditation. And... I had this knowing come over me, that source, and and this goes in, uh, falls in line with the Elohim, and the word Elohim, its root from Ram, and meaning to twist, twist. Absolutely, the gods twisted reality. Um, Originally, the energy flow was a circle, And there's source as one big circle. And the thing is, this is what I felt. I felt as if I could feel from source's perspective. We're all a part of source. And if you can really tap into it, it's really cool to to feel that. And source was in the shape of a circle, except that it couldn't experience itself it wanted to figure out who it was and what it was here, what it was here for and so in order to experience itself it had to twist and so then it could overlap it formed the upright infinity symbol the figure eight and it was able to touch itself for the first time and that is how creation began a twisting. It also, you know, potentially brought on duality <laughs> and and it could experience itself. But that is the importance of that infinity symbol. You see, you still, when it's a circle, you have, etern- it's eternal because the circle never stops. Neither does an infinity symbol. Within the infinity symbol, you gain awareness of yourself uh, if you're source because you're able to touch yourself and feel yourself, yet you're still eternal because you continue flowing in that up and down uh, 
shape. <laughs> anyway. Is so beautiful, so eloquently stated. And that's how we have as above, so below. If it that's hadn't true. twisted, there would not be the universal law of the Kabbalion as above, so below. And the whole purpose of the mystery school teachings is to know thyself, as the Oracle of Delphi says, know thyself. And if you can't experience yourself through the infinity loop, you can't know the as above and the as below aspects of yourself, which is ego and soul, spirit and matter. Exactly. Now that's what it's all about, experiencing, growing. I mean, yes, who source was was sad and lonely and bored and didn't <laughs> and didn't know know what it was. <laughs> That's, yeah. Yeah. You know, I know we all want to get back there, but to you really it kind of escaped itself so it could experience itself and grow and I, I feel like each each loop then twisted again and again and again and again and again and the far out pieces became separate from source although they never disconnected they just twisted so far out into such small pieces that they had to untwist so many times to get back to source. well that's the flower of life away. that that is yeah. if if you read um Duranovlo does a beautiful job in his book called the flower of life and he um talked to one of his his guides was toth oh, yeah. and um toth taught him about you know how creation and, and it, it's it's funny to hear you explain that it's exactly how um toth explained it to Duranovlo and he wrote it in his book Oh, wow. And if you look at the flower of life, you can see that. You can see all the infinity symbols and how they all separate and make all all the sacred geometry of the entire planet is in the, the flower of life. Yeah. 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 It was just an effort to to experience and then that piece wanted to experience and then that piece wanted to experience and then it just grew from there. But yeah, and that's why they're called a twister. It's not a bad thing that it's twisted. I mean, it, it needed to twist so it wouldn't be a circle anymore because a circle is cannot touch itself, you know. Sure. But um, so and, <laughs> we and we were supposed to have duality. You can't experience yourself without duality. Things got screwed up. We talked yeah. about that last week. But you have to have duality. I, you know, my inner knowing and I guess through my my personal astral and etheric experiences is no matter where you incarnate if you're in a physical body and I don't care if you're outside of this universe or you're on another planet you're you're going to experience physicality and it's going to have some level of duality if if you're not in a physical body and you're just pure energy pure energetics then you're 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 a free spirit you know that's what we call free spirits you you're yeah. free to do as you want and you don't you're not you're not in, in any kind of physicality and so there is no duality you're just energy but if you want to experience another planet or another dimension or getting you step into any kind of physicality well then you're you know then you're connected more to that infinity loop and, and you have you're going to have some kind of polarity certainly not like it is here but you know you're going to have some yeah the, the thing with here is that and the sideways infinity loop versus the upright one is that the sideways one if you think of source as a big infinity loop uh, spread out with a bunch of little infinity symbols coming off of that and coming off like the flower of life imagine one one part of it at the end is twi is tilted or, or like knotted. <laughs> That's kind of what happened here. It's been uh, affected so that it's manipulated, so that it's difficult f to untie it on its own. Exactly. Well, we've had four 26,000-year cycles, and we're beginning the fifth. Or you can say, you know, we're beginning the first all over again. It you know, it's the same thing. It's the it's the new new genesis. We're fifth time around the block. But after the first twenty six thousand year cycle, school was was over, and you were and then the golden gate would open, and you would leave, 
um, with the beginning of the next golden age, with the next, you know, the next grade, the next school system. And that didn't happen because it kept getting worse. And, and there, there were four Atlantises, four, you know, and, and you hear all these different stories. It's like, and I'll say to my friends, which Atlantis you're talking about? Because we all have genetic memory from all four. And when the second one started, because no one left, people could not exit uh, reincarnation. So when you went around to begin the second 26,000 year cycle, the, the supposed golden age wasn't as golden as it was supposed to do. It was, you know, and then the third one was even less golden. And the fourth one, you know, things were good for them then, a lot better than they are now, but it certainly wasn't as good as the first golden age. The Golden Gate never opened for those cycles because things were manipulated. So that knowledge, I mean, you know, the, the only knowledge that we had about the upward infinity loop was it was the eight. And, yeah. you know, and even in mathematics, you know, when in, in all of my calculus and my high math classes that I took in college, it was always sideways. Mm -hmm. And I never understood why I didn't agree with it. But, you know, I went with it. Uh, you know, you have, when in Rome, you do as the Romans do. But that's that's why this the information, the secrets of infinity, no one kept it secret from us. It's just that uh, we never used it. The true Golden Gate never opened. The upward infinity symbol was never activated, and and, and it is now. It's it's working now, so people can yeah. leave if they choose. That's right. And the. The challenge now is to do the inner work, uh, to reactivate the DNA and to to correct that energy flow through your body. And um, on that note, I've seen the number 144 repeated over and over, all over the place. And I see 144 kilobyte file size things when I'm working. I see it's 144 p.m. It, I see just randomly all over the place and I'm like what the heck does that mean like is it 144,000 angels of Israel what is that <laughs> well and she's not kidding I have to jump in here because she she's kind of making it sound like you know we all see you know 888 or not 888 I see 888 but I not not on my um, clock but <laughs> <laughs> but you know we all see 111 or 911 or whatever Andrea, it's hilarious. The 144 has just been, since we've been doing this research and even a little bit before it, crazy, crazy amount of times this girl has seen 144. So she's downplaying that part. So yeah, I would have, I had you to have jump 144 in. emails. It is one for, you have 144,000 emails. You have 100. I know. <laughs> the was, file size. Oh, this movie is 144 minutes long. I mean, we all the time. We would be on the phone for one hour and 44 minutes so many times when I talk to you. Yeah, exactly. It, it was popping up all over the all place. All over the place. So I'll, I'll mute again. Go ahead. <laughs> and, and so, you know, it's clearly my higher self was trying to bonk me on the head and get me to, to, to focus on that number. <clears throat> and finally, I realized it was related to the infinity symbol and to um, correcting the energetic template of the human body and we need to do that it, it's our bodies we own our bodies i mean yes the earth gave us gave us the material but it, she gave it to us for us to use and so we own what's in there um and another one of my dreams i was shown a human light body facing me and when it turned sideways, it expanded into 12 layers of 12 luminous bodies. And the 144, the 144, I'm like, ah, oh, 12, 144, all of these signs, I finally realized um, they point to our DNA and the new 12-strand DNA that we need to repair. The infinity symbol represents DNA, and there are 144 double helix strands in 12-strand DNA. 
Um, and as an on a side note, I also, besides the 144 showing up all the time, on my front window, I've mentioned this before, but on the front window of my dining room um, has turned pink. The sun shined on it and died just that one window has turned kind of a magenta color, very clearly a magenta color. And in that window is etched, it, it looks like a a chain link or a human spine and I finally realized that that is a DNA strand that I'm seeing. It's like a infinity symbol, infinity symbol, infinity symbol, infinity symbol, like next, right up and, and like chinks. It could be a spine also. That's, that's related. And it's basically a DNA strand. So that's like, hello, you know, fix the DNA. That's the main thing. We need to focus on correcting our templates so that we can we can access we can participate with this new energy that's coming in with this golden age our bodies are prepared to house more of our spirit and to participate with these higher frequencies um so we've got the 12 strand dna and in episode 10 of our show rising frequencies i had a experience where I saw my own DNA strands as interlinked infinity symbols and they stood up. They were from they were laying down as as like the sideways limbus gate does. There were all these strands laying down and they stood up. They were golden. They all stood up, tw- uh, 12 of them, and they started intertwining around each other in beautiful golden energy, repairing themselves and activating. It began at my root chakra and went all the way up to my crown and actually out through my crown and zoomed out as well. <laughs> but what's happened is our energetic bodies have been knocked off balance and disconnected and they must be repaired. We have to form this upright infinity loop of energy traveling from the earth up through our heart, looping through the crown up to our higher selves and going back into the heart to the earth and, and so forth. And, 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 you know, that's how we started. Well, not, not you, yes. all, but, you know, humanity started in the first 26,000 year cycle, which, like I said before, was four, you know, four in the past. We started um, vertical. And then that's what's known as the fall. You know, you can say we fell from grace, you know, with the Luciferian rebellion. And, uh, and we fell. And, that, and the Luciferian rebellion happened pre-Atlantis times. And Atlantis just made it worse. You know, thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. that was the fall. We had the upward infinity loop. And then it went to the sideways infinity loop. And that was the fall. Yep. It represents so many things. You know, the the poison apple, the DNA strands being deactivated and falling. You know, some even say, I have heard this, that it represents a female body, the divine feminine, and that fell and oh, fell side. Oh, <laughs> wow. Yeah. With that hour, hourglass figure. Oh, my gosh. That's true. Yeah. The fall of the divine feminine. Mm-hmm. Wow. And then you have the philosophical question, you know, um, were we supposed to fall? You know, Lu- Lucifer, well, it was all uh, Calcastodyne. Lucifer was a part of that merry band of fellows. Um, but, you know, even if the fall, the Luciferian rebellion had not happened, were we supposed to always stay connected to source or did... Did we agree to pull back and to make this the most challenging place? And then we got taken advantage of, you know, it's like, would we have fell anyway? Yeah, I don't know. I I do know that, that, well, my feeling and knowing, inner knowing, is that we were supposed to to have a a bit of a veil so that we could experience duality Mm -hmm. and and we could experience contrast. And it was supposed to be difficult. Yeah. But I think once we were veiled, we were taken advantage of. Some other races saw these great beings kind of 
playing games and trying to not be themselves and learn who aren't learn who they were and learn who source was and they're like they don't remember anything haha <laughs> they don't know oh, what know. what creators they are we can come in and we can sway them you know we can't create ourselves so we're going to come in and use these great creator beings to create what we want them to mm-hmm. and so they that's you know they use mind control and all of those things and screwed up our dna so we'd always be you know be stuck for ages and not yeah. you know creating what they wanted to create and they could they use us as when we're actually quite great beings it's like we're a bunch of supermen and and women superheroes who imagine if a a, you know a a evil guy grabbed superman and superman forgot what he could do and thought that the evil guy was more powerful than him and did everything that the evil guy told him to do with his super strength worked on behalf of the evil guy that's kind of what we've been doing as human beings so yeah i feel that we were supposed to fall um because you know the in the vertical infinity loop and the sideways infinity loop in and of themselves are polarities one is as below and one is as above one keeps you in as below and one lets you out to as above so they they are they are polarities and, and they fall right in line with, with universal law. And you have silver and gold. I mean, you know, silver and gold, silver and gold. There's all kinds of songs written about silver and gold. And yep. so, you know, I I do feel there was supposed to be a fall. And we were supposed to be disconnected from source, but not not looped you know, in the, in the continuous limnoscape skate that, you know, that the upward limno skate, the upward infinity loop was supposed to pop in after every single 26,000 year cycle and let those out that, that wanted to end the roller coaster ride. And then it would close again, you know, Taurus would guard the gate and uh, would guard the silver gate of men. And then when you were done after your 26,000 year cycle, and then the golden gate of the gods, gate of the gods would open and that's where you would exit. Um, but yeah, just we're just yeah. now getting back up on our feet. Exactly. Yeah. So they basically, you know, took advantage of us when we were, when we had fallen and we were down, but, and, but we had a a way out. We had this key, you know, we knew we'd eventually get out and then we had the golden key, the golden key, the golden golden key for the golden gate. And it's, it's interesting because you'll, you know, there's a saying there, there's an English, not English Britain, but just an English saying, you know, you take advantage of a guy when he's down. Yeah. You know, but we, we were down, but not out. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, they, yes, yes. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. They underestimate the power of humanity in our bodies. Exactly. And humanity never gives up. That's something that's, you know, just keep going, you know, persist and, and keep getting that, that spark of hope back. And, you know, no, we cannot it, be defeated. No, we can't. The knowledge of the Golden Gate, the knowledge of the vertical infinity loop, has it's always been there. It's just when you have it, when you, you don't use it, you lose it. And yeah. we have not used this Golden Gate for for four cycles. That's you know I can't do the math. Twenty six thousand times four, and that's just in Earth linear time. We know that you know that's. <laughs> time is not linear, but that's a long time. If someone could do the math, 26,000 times four, that's how many galactic years we've had. That's a lot. Yes. And there, and you know, there are souls here, maybe the ones listening to our, uh, our show when, when, whenever they actually finally tune in that have been incarnating since the first cycle. That's right. And more and more kept coming in you know Mm -hmm. but uh, there there there's some that have been here since the first atlantis and they went through the second one and they went through the third one and then they went through the fourth one and they're tired (laughs) yes they are the gods so it's time to to get out of this this sideways broken infinity loop and fix it get it get it standing upright and get out (laughs) 
and get it get it done. And Earth has been through this. Poor Guy has been through it over and over, and and it's time for her to do the same. She's she's ready as well, and yes. we're all and ready you know, to experience Bashar, the golden energy. Yes, woohoo! And uh, Bashar, um, I like to listen to him. I I am a fan of Bashar. Um, he in one of his talks he was telling a story about a actual argument now this is Bashar this is the entity Bashar um but Daryl Hannah was was telling the story that Bashar had an argument with someone else from his uh, um his reality uh they they were visiting his home and he was telling them that he works with people on planet earth and everyone there you know it's it's like the planet of the gods instead of the planet of the apes we're called like the planet of the gods because all these people have completed you know that cycle over and over and over again and they just they graduated they just weren't allowed out and the person was laughing and that this other you know individual is just laughing at Bashar saying that's absolutely impossible you cannot be disconnected from source so much not to know your divinity and not know how special the bodies are on that planet. And Bashar is like, they absolutely do not know. And that's the issue there. Mm-hmm. And that's right. I, I was like, oh my gosh, it's so true. People don't know that they're, you know, they're the ones that we've been waiting for. They're the gods, you know, return of the gods. When are the gods coming? Um, look in the mirror. We're oh, here. look, I have, I have an S on my shirt. <laughs> it's Superman. It's Superman. I have, I have Wonder Woman underoos on. Yeah. Hey, wait and, a minute. And if you look at the S, <laughs> Sorry. if you look at the S in Superman, what is that? Half of an infinity. Yeah. Half of an upward exactly. infinity symbol. That's right. And kryptonite, you know, you can go, oh, Right. I, can, I can jump on I, I had <laughs> There's a, another I had, rabbit hole. I know, that's another rabbit hole. I had a whole lucid experience about that song. Yeah. <laughs> There's so much truth. It's what's happened to humanity. You it know, is. It's, it's a story. It is. They were oh. cut off, you know, kry- kryptonite, you know, uh, when uh, Superman can't get the energy of the sun, you know. Um, same for us. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's our kryptonite, you know, not not being not being connected to source, and Superman is not fully connected. It's just half the infinity loop. And yeah, I could go on forever because <laughs> there's so much truth in it. Yes. So what's so important for everyone to know is that you own every cell of your physical body, and you own all of your energetic bodies. This includes your higher chakras and any implants you have. You own those. I mean, they have could have been those implants were could have been put into for malignant reasons. But you own them. They're in your body. You take control of them. People just don't know. They just don't realize. I actually heard a um, super soldier interview, and he mentioned that too. And I knew that was true. And I'm like, there we go. And he can phrase like, oh, you know, if you have implants, all you got to do is reprogram them. You can reprogram anything that's in your body. And I knew that. I already had known that when he said that. Um, and also, the higher chakras have been getting some a bad rap by a few. There's a few folks out there, a few teachers who, uh, who are very clued in, I think. But they've, in this area, I think they're a bit mistaken. Um, they say the higher chakras are completely bad they've been you know there's because of the uh, false light matrix that we've been stuck in you know the the higher upper chakras are fed that that light that false light and and once you rise your raise your kundalini you're just going to become a snake person you know you're going to get all messed up and and go on the wrong path and think you're you're enlightening yourself when you're really not. Well, the thing is, okay, that's kind of true. That there has been some shenanigans going on with the human body template, with with the uh, which is um, shown by the poison apple Taurus field, and you can 
but you can fix that. You need to take control and correct your upper chakras. Your upper chakras and even your reptilian brain, that's you, baby. It's part of you. You respect that reptilian brain. You know, it, it serves a function. And so do your chakras. You just need to know that those belong to you and correct. Just focus on correcting yourself. Focus on clearing them and cleansing them. And you you need to correct that energy vortex. You take charge of it. Then don't let the false light rule you. You rule your creation. You rule what you do. You rule your consciousness. You you create, become a conscious creator. And you just got to step into your power. Um, and that is what's so important. You want to reprogram any implants? You know, if you can't get them removed... Just reprogram them Reprogram them with your intent to work for you. You can start at the root, and we've been doing, we've done plenty of shows, one through seven, eight, <laughs> however many we went through. Yeah. Uh, maybe 10 was crown, yeah? I think. Um, yeah, we went through, you know, exercises you can do. Lisa gave a beautiful meditation to go into your heart, and that was episode eight, um, to help you clear and cleanse and reactivate each of your energetic centers and you can move up and regain control as you do it and don't stop at the heart you need to clear those top ones that's what's really important because those are the most oh well they're screwed up in a different way they've been manipulated the bottom ones are screwed up with ego issues mostly Um, but you want to form an energetic link between your brain and your heart so that your heart the mind in your heart the consciousness of your soul is directing your life, directs your brain and your ego, which is seated in the brain. You want your ego to bow to your soul, and the two eventually merge. As Lisa said, you want to merge ego and soul, do the magnum opus, and which is the great work that the alchemists talk about, and that's also merging heaven and earth. And it's time to fix our DNA and our body templates. You will complete your own internal pole shift and you turn that poison apple yep. into a golden apple. And that will prepare your temple to enter the golden age through the golden gate, the golden Lemnos gate. And I I want to touch on implants. And, you know, I, I kind of promised myself I wouldn't go down the rabbit hole after last week's show. But I got to. Um, because it, this, this is something... Um, that that should be talked about when I very first heard about etheric and astral and physical implants I I thought it was ridiculous it was in 2008 I was in mystery school and I was learning about this information and I just thought it was the stupidest thing and it wasn't until direct experience uh, later actually in, in 2009 that my tune changed you know once once you experience something you uh you learn about it and then i started reading more written literature about other people that were having the exact same experiences that that i was having and what these they are there are implants that aren't in your physical body yes they can be they can be but mostly it's it's in your astral body um, and it's it's in your etheric body and your energetic bodies is where this gunk, the, these things can get stuck in there, either intentionally put in or non-intentionally put in. Um, and they, they vibrate at a certain frequency and they aren't high vibrating. And when you raise your frequency, they automatically turn off. That That's why it's like they're in you. Um, you gave consent for them. Um, I'm sure it was coerced, but still, they're yours. And as you raise your frequency, they just automatically shut off. And if you want to turn them off before your frequency is higher, all you have to do is be aware of it and just take your consent away. That's it. It's so simple. And you can hold some crystals when you do it, and, and it's it's not it's not a big deal. So I don't want 
people to, you know, wh whenever you, you talk about something like that, it automatically throws people into fear. And that's just because they aren't educated in, on it. They, they haven't been taught these things in the unseen realms because most people only think the realm that they can physically see their computer in front of their face. That's that's my reality and that's the only reality that's there and that's not true that's very unbalanced you know if your only reality is your physical reality that's very unbalanced because you have the astral reality which is a energetic level and then you and that vibrates at a certain level and then you have the etheric reality you can leave your physical body and your astral body and go on the astral realm then you can leave your physical body and go to the etheric realm it's a different energetic body at that point and it and it high and it vibrates higher and then there's a third location and I've been to and I just call it the spiritual realm and it's very high vibrating and you are you wear a different energetic body for that that's where these little cooties you can pick up but they're not a big deal they aren't you can do, they're very easily easy very easy to turn off it's like popping a pimple on your physical body it's just everybody knows how to do that in the physical and no one taught you how to do it with your energetic body because no one wanted you to know and it's not woohoo it's just life you have an energetic body and you have a physical body. You got to clean both. You have to get rid of the pimples in your physical body and you have to get rid of the pimples in your energetic body. Exactly. And as a note, something also that I think is important to say, and this, this came to me a while ago, but it was reiterated when I was having a chat with someone this morning. Higher frequency trumps lower frequency. Higher frequent, the higher your frequency, the faster you are vibrating, and the faster uh, the oscillation rate is. So, so if you look at a wave, higher frequency waves are, you know, boom, 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 boom. You know, a lot of little, a lot of little waves all together. Lower frequency, you know, there's a, a wider wave pattern, you know, with fewer waves and they're they're longer. Now. Why would higher frequency trump lower frequency or be stronger than lower frequency? Simply because there's more consciousness in higher frequency. There are more waves. There's more there. You're bigger. You're stronger. You're more conscious. You're more of everything. More source is in a higher frequency being and in a, in a, at a higher frequency. So when you are raising your vibration, you are becoming more. You're becoming more of your higher self. You're becoming more God. You're bringing more source into your body. And the higher frequency bumps out the lower frequency or it raises it, which if it can be raised, it will say you have a person a highly evolved soul that incarnates into a family of lower evolved souls. And that happens a lot. It had happened when uh, the folks, uh, the indigos came, the ones that, well, it depends on what your definition of indigo is, but, but the light waves that Dolores Cannon talks about, a lot of those folks came in in order to uh, raise the vibration of the planet. And what they did was they were higher vibrating beings they were able to to get their bodies vibrating higher when they got to the planet and so they would they would be a higher vibrating being surrounded by lower vibrating beings and they would impact the vibration of all the folks around them and you know they they had trouble fitting in because those people were like why are you different you're not the same as us we are you better are you <laughs> and so the higher vibrating being would would irk the lower vibrating beings, but they would also anchor more light and raise the level of, you know, bother that the waves would interfere with the lower vibrating beings and cause, like, push them, either push them away if they couldn't handle it, or the lower vibrating beings would, would have to raise their vibration to be in the presence because that's the way it works. And so that's why the higher you vibrate and, and the more you raise your frequency, the more you cleanse and purify, you know, those implants. Yeah, they can't function. You, you can control them because they're just not as powerful. Lower vibrating things are not as powerful as higher vibrating things. 
True. So, there you go. And, and, that, <laughs> and, and that's why, you know, I hate when they always talk about the indigo children, the crystal children. Right. There are so many indigo adults. There are so many crystal adults. And I hate those stupid labels. It's all about vibration and frequency. That's all it is. Throw away those labels. There are certain people, and I'm sure every single person that listens to this, is you, you are one of those people, whether you have woken up to it or not, you are one of the people that came here to not only raise the vibration of the planet, but to raise the vibration of the people around you. That's why so many of the quote, air quotes, indigos, indigo adults um, were born into crappy family situations because they chose it so that they could raise the vibration of those around them because um, you know it, it has to be done and you need really high vibrating souls to do that and so there were you know so many you know seven million people on this planet and um, I would have to say 90% is very low vibrating and so we need more vibrating, high vibrating souls just to ping off the hunter monkey theory, which we're doing marvelously because the vibration of the planet is is really increasing to the point that these lower vibrating people are just not going to be able to keep up. Go is guy and go going. Go is guy is going. I just spit on my own words. <laughs> um, and whether these low vibrating people like it or not, they need to keep up. And that was the job of these uh, high vibrating souls was to ping off with the hundredth monkey. Um, but, you know, there's a time limit for everything. <laughs> and guy is going and, you know, uh, not everyone's going to, with her. And that's the sad truth. But it, it's, it's a fact. It's a fact. You know, there, in 2008, I was given this vision of... <laughs> I saw Gaia as a um, animal and I saw humanity as like little um, fleas and I'm not be I'm not being mean or anything but this I'm just describing what what was given to me little fleas on her and I saw her just growing and growing with this magnificent light and just vibrating and vibrating so high that these little fleas could no longer stay on her and because the higher you vibrate it, it shakes more she just shook them off she just shook them off now they, they just didn't die they they went to a different location but they did not they did not proceed with her and that was before I knew anything about 2012 um, in 2008 I, I didn't know about the, the the shift of the ages I didn't know any of that stuff I was uh, a newbie uh, a, a new age I've never been a new age person and, and I had zero information about the new age but that was what I saw and it wasn't until later that um, I started studying the books and I was like wow okay so yeah that's that that is that is how it works and I wanted to there's a really cool thing you could do to, to this really helped for me to understand vibration and how it works and with these frequencies if you get out a piece of paper and you draw a straight line and that line is um, absolute truth total you know e equality um, equator you know, right down the center of the planet, the, the dead middle, the middle pillar, that's where everyone should be, the, the middle pillar of their truth. That, that's your central column of chi, prana. And so that's going sideways. And if you take a line at the bottom, or take your pen and put it at the bottom of the line, and you're going to draw and go straight up and like a very gentle roller coaster, make a great big loop and then keep going down and just make these waves very very big that's a low frequency so when you have seven million people that are at a low frequency you can see how often they touch God that they tr they touch the absolute truth and it's not very often so that's why, you know, when people are asleep and you have low vibrating people and they're clueless, well, this is why. 
this is why you have to do your chakra work and this is this is how you know thyself you know you have to touch yourself you have to touch divinity which is that straight line that's the absolute truth that's how you know yourself now that's low vibrating if you take a take your pen and at the bottom of that line draw a second line and take a very short roller coaster ride and it goes up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down and up and down that's a high frequency and look at how that's moving how many times does that high frequency line touch source touch the middle pillar touch the equator a lot Exactly. And that's a higher consciousness. When someone, when you say someone has a high frequency, they have a higher consciousness. They have more inner knowing. They have more clairvoyant abilities. Um, they're awake. And that's because they are touching the divine. You know, Aristotle, Da Vinci, Plato, Copernicus, Giordano, um, Bruno. I could go on and on with the greats. They were all high frequency. Tesla our tesla um and they and they would touch absolute truth frequently because their frequency was high and these little cooties that you can pick up implants they they're on that low wave low to medium wave and when you vibrate really high you shake it off just shake it off just be gone exactly but, yeah it's just simple simple science <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so that's the whole deal. That's why we raise our vibration to correct our templates, to correct our our energetic streams, and and to so that we can get through the golden gate and to connect to get with off. Source. Yeah, connect with source. Get off this merry-go-round. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I had a lucid dream about that too. <laughs> Oh wow! <laughs> I saw all these people in a merry-go-round. They were just going around and around, and um, there, there. You could either go around and around, or you had a choice to go and be shot off into oblivion. Wow! It was a horror. It was one of my nightmarish, lucid dreams. It was. It was not pleasant. Not pleasant at all. But um, I, 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 I have it written down in my journal. I mean, there there was deep meaning in it at the time. It was before things were really corrected. Golden Gate certainly was not open. <laughs> right. And now, yeah. and something else we've we um, discussed is, you know, we're on a positive timeline. We're on an ascension timeline, but we're on an organic timeline as well. That's that's something that's important to say. Yeah, you know, because last week's show we kept we wanted to emphasize it's a positive timeline. <laughs> and I read an article that, you know, the the whole premise of this article was it it's a organic and I just had a huge light bulb aha moment and I'm like, "Yes." Yes, it's organic, it's natural, it's pure, um, it, no chemicals added, you know, um, all, all those other, you know, possible timelines that, that we were on were full of crap, and, and they weren't organic and natural, and there, there's nothing more natural than, than source, and the upward infinity loop, the golden gate, that's the natural, organic way to ascend and, and planetary ascension or personal ascension because they're both separate but i like the word organic i'm i am i don't like the word positive timeline anymore because it gets you know yes we're in duality but organic is just natural it's just the way it's supposed to be right it's a it's the living timeline the and living. not the debt not the dead timeline, not the false light matrix or right. the false light ascension plan. It's, it's working. And that woman, I, um, let's give her credit. Her name's Michelle Walling, Wallach. I don't know. It's Which, exit, in, exit the, isn't the, isn't it the exit the matrix website? Uh, in 5d. In fi Yes. But she has the, I, I think her Facebook oh, page is exit the matrix. And she's now working with Greg Prescott at in 5d. And she's banging out some amazing articles. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling she, you, there's, there's, I feel like I've written them. <laughs> uh, 
I, I, I've, you know, it, I usually don't resonate with a lot of people's writings because I don't know where, I, I don't know where they're getting their information. If you don't get your information from experience, you know, it's like, well, where are you pulling this stuff from? It's, you know, <laughs> oh my gosh, it's just, it's just crazy town out there. Yeah. Nowadays, guys, on the internet, you really have to use your discernment. Um, you know, there's been a couple things where I'm like, eh, that wasn't my experience on the astral, but I don't know everything. But uh, she, she's great. Mm -hmm. I fully support her work. It's like, you go, girl. We need more people out there sharing information. That includes yeah. people listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <sighs> okay, so. girly. Yeah. <laughs> oh, someone. Yeah, we have we have nine listeners. <laughs> we, <laughs> we don't advertise when we record, so it's really cool that that, that people just happen to uh to drop in to, to drop in. We I am going to be doing a live um a webinar on essential oils. Uh, oh gosh, what was the date we picked? I think it was April fifteenth. Yes, April 15th. April 15th, and it will be at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time, which is New York time, and it's going to be um, on essential oils, how to use them, and um, all kinds of information. I've, I've been studying them for uh, since 20, 2009. Long time. <laughs> yeah. Long time. But we, we don't announce when we're recording, so it's really cool that people are listening. And someone wrote in the chat, Cosmic Star Seeds. I think that's what they wrote. And that's 100% correct. Mm -hmm. That's 100 Everybody that listens to this call is, is a Cosmic Star Seed. No doubt. That's no, right. No doubt. And God bless them. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're doing it. We're... People are, are correcting that they're better than anyone expected. Earth is is really, I mean, the new energy is coming in, and and she is has is rising every day. The Earth Gaia is rising, and it is and, rising because and we are we, on her body still, and we which are is on fabulous. her body. And if uh, if if you're on the sideways infinity loop. We rose to the upward infinity loop to the Golden Gate. So we did. We went, we rose up. Very cool. Yep. Very cool indeed. Okay, girly, you have anything else you want to add? We can call it a night. I don't think I have anything else. We've said it all <laughs> for this show. <laughs> <laughs> for this show, that that is true. Okay, well, thank you for tuning in to Rising Frequencies. And good night, good day, and we hope you join us next time. Yes, everyone have a great afternoon, evening, morning. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.